Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Stormworks. In this one, we are back working on our lifting body, and we've got a few fun things to do in this episode, so definitely stick around, stay tuned. The first thing we're gonna kinda start working on is getting some of our fuel lines set up a little bit more. So um, we've gotta add some transfer pipes in between all of our tanks, and then we've also gotta add a way to fill our tank. So each one of the wings is gonna get two ports, one for the diesel, one for the jet, and uh, then we are going to, later on in the episode, we're gonna switch over and we're gonna start tidying up that cockpit that I've been wanting to do for a while. That thing has been looking really messy. And uh, we're gonna start getting that put together a lot more. I think you guys will find that part pretty interesting. We've got uh, some pretty, pretty weird, fun things to do with that. There's gonna be a lot of physics bodies involved, but it ends up looking really, really good in my mind. So definitely stick around, stay tuned for that. And uh, real quick, if you guys like this build series, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We've got plenty of more Stormworks coming. And, uh, you know, I've, I've also got a lot of other projects going on and planned. I've been working a little bit more ahead of things than I should. So I'm trying to get this project wrapped up for you guys so you guys can play with it. Um, now, I normally like to do build challenges for a lot of my builds. This one, we're not going to have a build challenge. Um, but we do have one going on if you haven't seen that. So um, there's a link down below to my Discord. It's for our oil rig. You guys have a about 10 days to do that still. So um, it's a helicopter build challenge if you haven't seen that. But enough of that. We're going to get right into the building in this episode. And uh, I'm just going to let the time lapse roll. We're going to get some of these pipes hooked up. And uh, then we'll move on over to the cockpit. <laughs> All right, well, we are back under the wing and we are working on getting some of these fill ports in. So we need, like I mentioned earlier, we need one for our diesel and one for our jet fuel. The diesel has to go through the wings down into the lower tank in the bottom of the fuselage. That's where our diesel tank is. And then, um, you know, in the beginning, we were kind of hooking up some of the, uh, the pipes for the refueling boom. So in the last episode, we worked on the boom, but we didn't quite get a lot of the piping done. So now the boom has the same piping as the drone and that way you can pump diesel or jet fuel out of it depending on what kind of plane you need to refuel and there is one pipe I still didn't add 
and you guys won't see that I actually did it off camera but um, we needed to add fuel cross feeds between the tanks so there's two feeds between the tanks that uh, kind of help equalize the pressure in the level but then there's also another part that goes directly into the jet engines feeds too so if you lose all of the fuel in one tank it'll continue pumping fuel from the other wing into both engines that way, it's just a little bit more rugged, a little bit more durable once you're flying it in the air. Something that I think is relatively important for a lot of aircrafts, even you know non-military aircrafts, this is generally something that's done. And that way, you just have a little bit of redundancy just in case you do have some sort of fueling problem with one. Um, but enough of that. Right now, I am just doing some basic microcontrollers for our instrument panels under the wings. I got to read the diesel and the jet fuel levels, and then I also have to add a button for the pumps. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Pretty simple, nothing complicated. I'll just leave it in. Um, but yeah, guys, that is going to be most of the piping that we have to do. This build is pretty light on the piping, which is kind of um, ironic because the other build I'm doing right now is basically just all piping. And uh, if you guys haven't checked that out, definitely go check it out. Uh, I'm building an oil rig that fits in the normal workbench and it will drill autonomously. So you just got to click a couple buttons and it'll do its thing. But uh, yeah, so this is one of the last um, kind of mechanical systems on the plane that we have to get done. And then the rest of it's really going to be a lot of Lua and a lot of um, just kind of programming stuff, getting a lot of switches into the cockpit and whatnot. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in this episode where I start to actually put the dash in the cockpit and the panel, the overhead instrument panels and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of the Lua on screen, just I didn't record it and it's already done. So if you guys do want to see that in the future, let me know. It's, it's a little cumbersome. I'm not, I will say, honestly, I'm not the guy you should be learning Lua from. Um, I know how to get by, but I'm definitely not in any way a pro. Um, definitely there's other people that you probably can learn a lot more from than me watching me do Lua. But if you, if you want to see some of the basics in all that kind of good stuff, definitely let me know. I'll try to incorporate that, incorporate that into some of the future episodes. So we got all of these for the most part hooked up. We're going to spawn it in the world real quick. I need to read these fuel numbers so I can set a range for the dials. Um, kind of annoying, but it's something you got to do a lot in Stormworks. Also that backlight does not seem to be working correctly. So I got to change that. Um, and then now what we're going to do too, is let me, let me fix these microcontrollers quick, but then we're going to put some tanks on to the aircraft and in with the tanks, we can test if the refueling actually works. So I'm going to drain the tanks a little bit. I'm just going to put some of the defaults down, hook a hose into them, click the button, make sure they fill. Um, and then later on also, I, I know I said there isn't much more piping. Actually, I, I lied. There is a little bit more, not much. Um, but we're going to add a couple ports on other parts of the ships where you can drain fuel as well, like in the cargo bay. One of the key aspects of this AWACS is that it is, I mean, technically it does a lot of things, but um, it is a obviously a tanker and it's a VTOL. So we're carrying a lot of diesel on board, which isn't necessary for a lot of planes, but it is kind of useful if you want to land and refuel a lot of ground-based vehicles. So I figured having some ports that were not the drogue or the boom to empty the fuel tanks would be a nice little addition. So we will add those later on, but that comes much down the much further down the road. And you know, it's, it's not really that complicated. I just kind of hook into the, uh, the pipes you see right there in the background, the yellow and the red one. Um, I hook into those and you can, you know, pull diesel and jet out at the end of the ramp. That way you can refuel whatever you want in the cargo bay, or if you land next to a bunch of other vehicles, they can kind of pull up and refuel their tanks as well. So one last thing I'm doing is I'm adding some fume ports or I guess technically gas relief valves onto uh, the diesel tank and I'm not really in love with where this is but um, yeah, you know, I don't really have too many options so that's kind of where it's going to go and these are absolutely essential for the tanks if you don't the pressure goes really high you start to lose fuel pressure going into your engines and whatnot um, so it's a rather important part to add to the vehicle now i i like to label them they're not really you don't really need to label them in stormworks the uh the gas fumes don't actually do anything but in real life you would probably not want to um, have the vent for the fuel tanks next to anything combustible just because the vapor sometimes can be combustible. So I'm trying to move it away from, um, you know, obviously the engines and stuff. That's why the ones on the wings are way out at the wing tips. That way the, uh, the, the vents are not anywhere near the engines. 
So this is too wide. It's not going to be symmetrical. That's fine. As long as it's there, um, it's on the bottom of the aircraft. So you're not really going to see it that much. And also I'm not really always too concerned about being symmetrical anyways. I like a lot of asymmetrical designs, which um, generally isn't advised with planes, to be honest. So, um, <laughs> you know, if you're building a plane, it probably should be symmetrical just for the performance of it. But um, as you guys can see from a lot of my other builds in my, especially my boats and stuff, a lot of my designs are not necessarily super symmetrical. And I think that just kind of adds a nice little touch to it. But right now we are adding a couple gauges for all of our fuel tanks, and I thought that that would be another kind of necessary thing to add. So um, just like that display, I'm not going to add that display. Well, actually, maybe I'll go back and change it because we have that screen and it's the same footprint. It, it does look a little bit better than the gauges, but the only downside to it is it doesn't show the amount of liters. It just shows the percentage of fuel you have. So um, a little different, but right now I just wanted to have these over here so you guys can kind of see um, while you're in the cargo bay how much fuel is in the ship or in the plane, not the ship. Uh, I built way too many boats, so sorry for misspeaking. But uh, yeah, that is, um, you know, that's going to be one of the last really big key features of functionality for this. We already have a charging port on the aircraft. So um, right here, I'm just going to add a little bit more of more labeling with paint blocks and i think that that is just a nice little touch um again it's it's on the wing it's under on the underside so you won't really see it that much but at the same time um there's really no reason to not add it and it helps people kind of find where the fueling ports are so we're gonna add it i think it looks nice it's a silly little detail but i think these little details really help the builds so um, i'm just going to continue doing them <laughs> All right, well, we're moving on to the cockpit section of the ship. You guys can see right there, I added some sonars. So um, I'll kind of talk about those a little bit later on, but basically these are some droppable sonars. What they do is they transmit the sonar data on over to our radar screen, and they will kind of display where in the screen the sonar sits um, GPS wise, which is kind of cool. There is two of them, so you can use two different ones at once. Um, and then they just like pretty simple. They just broadcast their sonar data back to the airplane. And then there's also a physics sensor that gets broadcasted. Um, so there's three different radios. The third radio is a receiver and that kind of is the, we'll call it the on off switch for the radar. But 
Enough of that, we're moving on to the dashboard. When I start doing my cockpits, usually I try to start with the dash because it is one of the bigger pieces that you're gonna have to build. Now we're gonna be doing a lot with physics bodies in this, so they're gonna be moving around a lot and uh, I'm gonna try to lock everything in place too so it doesn't really move around too much. Um, but this cockpit is going to be not, not complex button wise, but there's gonna be a lot of different um, kind of things going on, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find a place that we're gonna put our, our little dashboard. And then that way we can obviously get our screens and our buttons and, and all that kind of good stuff on it later. But for the, for the meantime, I'm just trying to kind of put the blocks down, shape it out, get it to a place that I'm happy with. And uh, we're gonna have a lot of trouble because I'm gonna squeeze a lot into this, but um, you guys will kind of see, we're gonna play around a lot with the physics bodies. And you guys can see right now, I am just kind of moving these pivots. So they're gonna go on a pivot onto a track, which is not, <laughs> not very optimized as far as physics bodies go, but I'm trying to get this thing exactly in the dashboard where I want it. And we actually end up having to make the windows a separate physics body that slides backward and locks into place just so I can squeeze this as close up to the windows as possible. And uh, like I said earlier, we're gonna try to get everything in here locking. So everything um, is going to either get a mag all or a hard point to lock in place. And that way we can kind of try to minimize the amount of jitters that go on in the cockpit. And I'm sure if you guys played Stormworks long enough, you'll understand that a lot of times when you do these separate physics bodies, especially inside of airplanes and stuff, they shake like crazy when um, you're doing certain maneuvers and whatnot. But for the most part, that's kind of the shape we're going for. I'm going to extend it a little bit just so um, it looks a little bit better, but that is going to require us separating these windows and then sliding them back. So I've got to take these as a phys separate physics body. I'm going to move them forward a block, um, and then we have got to get a linear track down below that slides them back one block and locks them into place so you can't really tell once it gets spawned in. So kind of a small, weird little detail. Um, a lot of planes don't really do this in the game, but um, I really want the cockpit and this thing to look really, really good. So that is one of the things that we're gonna be focusing on. And uh, I, like I said, I think it ends up pretty good. We're probably not gonna get it all done to, in today's episode, but at least we'll get a lot of the blocks in. And then once we get the blocks in, we can, uh, we can start placing our seats around and get, find a good position for those two. So these are all things that I always try to um, figure out a little bit ahead of hand. And this build, it's a little different just because I was doing a lot of the actual aircraft before we get into the cockpit. But you guys can see that locked in the place, the dashboard's folded back. I think that looks a lot better and it is nice and snug up against that window and it should offer quite a bit of room for instruments and good stuff like that. So um, for reference, this, this cockpit's going to be mostly glass. There's not gonna be a lot of uh, mechanical gauges or dials or whatnot. So um, that's kind of why I was talking about having to do a lot of Lua in the future. Um, there's gonna be a two by three screen for each seat and then a two by three screen in the middle and then a one by three screen in the middle. And then the top of the panel generally referred to as the, the mode control panel is um, going to be where you find your altitude hold and whatnot. And then again, like most planes, we'll also have a bunch of switches on the roof. So that is kind of what we have planned. It's gonna be a pretty standard layout for a cockpit, but there's gonna be not that many buttons. And a lot of my builds, I try not to do a lot of button kind of stuff, just so you guys don't have to um, read a 10 page manual on how to learn or how to use the, the airplane. But enough of that. This is more or less most of the building we're gonna get in today's episode. So um, in the next episode, we'll come back to the cockpit. We'll start working on it a lot more. But if you guys stayed till the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know this one was a little bit quicker, but uh, I promise you we'll start working on the uh, more technical parts soon. So thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.